take a look at this family, two brothers, different temperaments, different pursuits. I'm not sure of the age difference because the Bible doesn't talk about it. One was very vocal. The other brother, only when it affects him, he speaks out and he reveals what is in his heart. We don't get to meet their mother. Like you saw the picture, only the father was there. Did you notice? <laughs> it's like you take a group photograph, the mother is not there. Suddenly she says, wait, 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 I'm coming. By the time she comes, you click. And the mother is left out. And I believe that's what would have happened here. The artist, Cavill Waite, in 1947, paints father and son embracing upon the son's return and also includes in the background the mother running to join them. I would like us to look at this family in Luke's Gospel chapter 15. <clears throat> How do we measure that we are the fathers that God wants us to be? Talk to our children. And I want us to look first at the two boys and then come to the father and pick up certain lessons for all of us this morning. The first one in Luke's gospel chapter 15, we look at the younger one, verse 2, <clears throat> verse 12. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So he divided to them his livelihood. There are five things I want to highlight about the nature of the younger brother. Number one, he was an impatient boy. He wanted it now. He didn't want to wait for the right time for the father to distribute. And there are children this morning, may I say this. Sometimes in our life we want things to happen now. He could have waited for his, for his share. His portion of the inheritance due him. He is asking for the one third of the father's possession. The second thing you find here, he was not only impatient, he was also an impulsive boy. In verse 12, an impulsive decision, not weighing the pros and cons. I saw it, I want it, and I want it now. Wanted to be free from parental control, restraints. Wanted an inheritance now. And my dear loved ones, those of us, you know, this morning we can sit and say, ah, Ah, this is my eldest son, I can picture. This is my youngest daughter, I can picture. No, no, no. I think it's good for us to say, Am I, was I like that? Once upon a time, you too were like that. So let's not just look at our children, but ask ourselves, have I been impulsive? In my impulsive state, how did my dad react? How did my mother react? Maybe the son who is not open to any kind of a discussion. He didn't want to have any reasoning and he says i want it now now look at samson in judges chapter 14 <clears throat> judges chapter 14 verse 1 to 3 now samson went down to timnah and saw a woman in timnah of the daughters of the philistines so he went up and told his father and mother saying i have seen a woman in timnah of the daughters of the philistines now, therefore, get her for me as a wife. Then his father and mother said to him, Is there no woman among the daughters of your brethren or among all my people that you must go and get a wife from the uncircumcised Philistines? Look at what Samson said. And Samson said to his father, Get her for me, for she pleases me well. And this younger son was not only impatient, he was not only impulsive, but he was also insensitive. Didn't bother about his father's feelings. And my friends, many times I'm sure you would have sat there and said, Hey, children, why don't you understand? It is daddy's hard-earned money, mommy's hard-earned money. Why are you doing this? You're not able to see my tears. You're not able to see my pain. I am trying to reason out with you. 
I'm trying to talk to you, my children. Please understand. But they are not bothered because the friend circle is different. They put a lot of pressure and they're saying, Daddy, you do not know you are old-fashioned. There is a big generation gap. Listen to what I'm saying. Impatient, impulsive, insensitive. William James said, The greatest discovery of my generation is that human beings can alter their lives by altering their attitudes. Martin Luther, he said a happy person is not a person in a certain set of circumstances, but rather a person with a certain set of attitudes. He was also an irresponsible son. Look at verse 13 and 14. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there wasted his possessions with prodigal living. But when he had spent all, there arose a severe famine in that land, and he began to be in want. It is not his money, but his dad's. He wanted it. Wild living, waste living, reckless living. Empty living. Maybe there is someone sitting here who is in the same place. I have lost all my savings. If I don't give, fathers, let me ask you a question. If your child who is studying in PUC comes and says, Daddy, give me my share. I don't think you will be willing to say, Son, I've been waiting for this. Just take it and go. I'm sure you will reason out. But here is a child who is so stubborn and say, Nothing doing. I want it now. Give it to me now. If you don't give it, see what, is, what I'm going to do. And so there is fear. Here is a boy who spent it. Didn't even think twice. He took it and went away. Irresponsible. And you also find that he's an independent boy. There is an age to be independent. You ask the little child, and I was talking to my granddaughter. She's only seven years. I said, baby, be careful. She said, I'm not a baby. Mm. Wow. And then when she goes shopping and I ask something, she asks for this. I said, that is a baby's toys, ma. She said, I'm a baby. <laughs> Look at it. They act like adults when they want to act. They want like babies when they want to act. But parents, we are parents. God has kept us in that position with a purpose. Maybe there is someone sitting here and saying, Pastor, how true. I have given hell to my parents. It is only because of God's grace I am here. The Lord changed my direction. And he said, sometimes you find the children are like a mirror. We see ourselves in our children. Have you noticed that? You don't look at your children at all? You do. And we're not able to say anything. Because the child says, Daddy, how are you, Daddy? At that time. No more, those days were different. Impatient, impulsive, insensitive, irresponsible, independent. Now look at the second boy. The second boy, the elder one, in verse 25, he is uninvolved in verse 25. Now his oldest son was in the field, and as he came and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing. He was in the field. Maybe him going away did not bother him. Maybe there was a different equation with the younger and the older. Maybe the father was waiting for the younger boy, but the elder boy was not perturbed at all. He was uninvolved. Now this little boy wrote a letter to God. He said, Dear God, Thank you for the baby brother, but what I prayed for was a puppy. <laughs> Do you get along with your brother, with your sister? Sometimes you say, I wish he was not there. I wish he was not there. Because in this house I see there is partiality. In this house I see that every time we get a mark, there is a comparison among the siblings. See how your brother is studying. See how you are studying. And so the child goes through. Some of the young people are smiling, looking at your parents. No, this happens in all families. 
This happens in all families. Look at your brother. Look at your sister. Well, what are you doing? Maybe that was the equation. I do not know where the Bible is silent. I prefer to be silent. Uninvolved. So what? If he's lost, that's his fate. Let him go where he wants to go. Daddy, why are you worried, Daddy? The second thing you find here, he was unforgiving. Verse 30. But as soon as a son of yours came, who was devoured your livelihood with harlots, you killed the fatted calf for him. And he said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that I have is yours. And the Bible says the boy was very angry. Look at that verse. Verse 28. But he was angry, would not go in. Therefore his father came out and pleaded. Unforgiving. He did not want to be part of this celebration. He didn't want, maybe he stood there and said, Daddy, is it fair? He's got both sides of the world. He enjoyed everything. He spent everything that you had. Now he's coming home and you're giving him biryani. But I am here. What is that you have done? He feels so rejected, unwanted, unloved. Listen, my dear parents, sometimes we have to be careful because children are watching. Children are watching. We are not perfect parents. The Lord does not make perfect fathers. Am I right? We are imperfect fathers, but we are worshiping a perfect God and we pick up these values from the Father who, say, who teaches us. Uninvolved, unforgiving. He was unreasonable. Look at what he's telling his father. He refuses to see things from his father's perspective. Daddy, maybe you're feeling this way because you would have messed up something. Why should I go through it, Daddy? Why are you waiting for him? Is there someone who is missing that son this morning? Look at what he said. I have been serving you. I never transgressed. You never gave me a young goat that might make my friends. I feel so let down, rejected, unappreciated, unloved. It's not fair. Fathers, maybe you have traveled that place, traveled that path. You have come thus far. Maybe some of us have not, some of you have not seen your father. Some of you are saying, I did all this because of the relationship that I had with my father. He never understood. He never understood. Every time he was there only for the others. Where were you, daddy? When I went through pain. Where were you? When I cried. Where were you when I was looking for someone and you were not there? Ah, son, understand, son. Understand, you're always with me, but he's gone. Uninvolved, unforgiving, unreasonable, uninterested. Verse 28. He did not ask his father, but he called his servants and said, what is happening inside? Friends, I like the word there. Father came out and pleaded. Look at the word, pleaded. But he was not interested. Yes, he's my brother. Again, I do not know the age difference. The brother. Yes, he's my brother, daddy. But I don't want to have anything to do with him. His return. Look at what the father said in verse 32. Your brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. That's what the father said. I'm sure the younger brother would have gone a step backward and said, I wish he was dead and totally lost. Why should I go through it? Why should I lose mine? 
Again, this little boy, Larry, wrote a letter to God. He says, God, maybe Cain and Abel would have lived peacefully and not killed if they had their own rooms. It works with my brother. Is that a sibling rivalry? Think. I've said it, my friends, parents, we will go away. But beware of creating the disharmony. I don't know what has happened in this home. But both the brothers had these two major problems. Disobedience and disrespect. You can call daddy, you can call father, you can say my loving dad, my loving father. It all depends on how we relate to that father. Disobedience and disrespect. A father taking care of these two boys. What kind of a father was he? And that's what I want to focus on. Number one, look at verse 13 and verse 28. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there wasted his possessions with prodigal living. Verse 28. But he was angry and would not go in. Therefore his father came out and pleaded with him. Number one, he was a patient father. I don't think the father, when the boy came and said, Son, take it and go, son. Good riddance. Don't see my face hereafter. Get out from here. Oh, I think it was a painful thing. It would have been a painful thing. I'm talking as a father. And there are many fathers who can't even imagine where the child comes and says, Daddy, give it to me, Daddy. Why are you saving for the future? I want it for the present. Give it to me. And you are helpless. You can argue. You can reason out. But I see a father here who would have reasoned out with the child. Why? Because in verse 28 you find the father came out and pleaded with the older son. If he was an aggressive father, a father who is hard, he could have said, let him get lost. If he wants to come, let him come in. This is my home. Let him behave the way he wants. I don't care. Oh, but the father came out. We do not know how old the father is. My friends, people say, your parents would have said, boys don't cry. Am I right? Am I right? But let me tell you, boys cry, fathers cry, son cries. Am I right? We have cried. Sometimes we watch and we can't even cry in front of our wives. And so we swallow our tears. Oh, my son. I don't know why he did it. How do I know he's patient? Please look into your text, please. Verse 13, and not many days after, even after he asked for his wealth, he did not leave immediately. He continued to stay in his father's house. He ate the father's resources. He lived with the luxury. The father did not tell him, son, now that you've taken, get out now immediately. Maybe the father was patient, waiting for the son to turn. My dear fathers, no matter how heavy it is on your heart this morning, please allow the Lord to work. Let us not be aggressive and close the door that the son cannot come back. He was willing to go to any extent to explain to the boys and make them understand. He faced the rebellion of the sons. He knew that he can only plead with the children. He can only cry to the children and say, please son. But he cannot hold them back. Maybe he would have just whispered and say, Lord, have grace. Get my son back. God has got a way of turning people around. Isn't what the Bible says about our father? Look at 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. 2 Peter 
chapter 3 verse 9 the lord is not slow to fulfill his promise as some count slowness but is patient toward you not wishing that any should perish but that all should reach repentance he is a patient god are we patient fathers Look at our own father. Sometimes we look and say, Daddy, how did you cope with the daddy? There are some fathers, as I said, who could not handle it. And you have not seen the father. But there is always a heavenly father who waits. And says, son, I love you. My daughter, I love you. He's a patient father. One Sunday morning at the Richmond Town Methodist Church, you know, every Sunday, most of the Sundays I preach. One Sunday morning, my little girl, now she's grown up, she's a mother of two. She was small. She came into my study room and said, Daddy, are you preaching this Sunday? I said, no, ma. She said, yeah, Daddy is not preaching. I said, why? You know what she's saying? Daddy, if you're not preaching on Sunday during the week, I can play with you. Look at it, what he's saying. You sit with your Bible, you sit with your books, you hold the pen and say, Shh, don't disturb. And when they shout and do all sorts of things, we get angry. Very often parents, we get angry with the children, not because of what they're doing, because we are irritated. Am I right? Hey, you choose to say hallelujah only in few places. Isn't that right? It's true. Let's not pretend as if we are good. No, we have done mistakes. Why are you doing this? Same child does the same thing on vacation. But when they are busy, when they do the same thing, we get irritated. Say, says, Daddy, why are you impatient? Be patient. Listen to what I'm saying. When the child comes back and says, Mommy, you know what happened? Today also you got punished, huh? Are mommy, listen to what I'm saying. Today, teacher didn't come. Oh, that one. The Bible says the end of the matter is better than the beginning. Impatient. But the father was patient. The second thing you find about this father is in verse 18 and verse 20. I will arise and go to my father and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. Verse 20. And he arose and came to his father. And when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. He was not only a patient father, he was also an available father. The first thing the boy said and did when he came to his senses, is to come to his father. Let's ask ourselves, when our children rebel and get out of the house, angry with things that are not good, maybe things are all right, but may I say this, godly parents need not have godly children. Sometimes we can sit there and say, what mistake have I done? Sometimes we can live in that guilt. But here is a father, the boy, when he... When he came to his senses, what did he say and do? I will go back to my father. He knew that his father would welcome him. He knew that his father would be waiting. Maybe from the way the father spoke before he left. Maybe the father, I don't know friends, I'm only thinking. Maybe the father would have made him and said, son, do you really want to go? You will miss it. He knew that even though he went to a distant land, when the word distant land, please remember it is not only geographical, distant land, distant from his father, we can be in the same house and yet be distant. We can be in the same room without talking to each other. No one was available for him when he went through pain. His friends that he depended on, they left him. Nobody wanted to hire him. Maybe the boy said, I will prove it to my father. Maybe the girl said, I will show it. Don't underestimate me. I'm a young man. But he came to his senses. He came to a place where he realized 
that only the Father really cares. Oh, I read this and it was beautiful. I thought I should read it. Father, when I was four years old, I said my daddy can do anything. When I was seven years old, I said my dad knows a lot, a whole lot. Eight years, my father doesn't quite know everything. Twelve years, oh well, naturally, father doesn't know everything. When I was 14 years, father, hopelessly old-fashioned. When I was 21 years, oh, that man is out of date. What did you expect? When I was 25 years, I said he knows a little bit about it, but not much. When I was 30 years, I must find out what dad thinks about it. When I was 35 years, I said a little patience. Let's get dad's meaning first. When I was 50 years old, I said, what would dad have thought about it? When I was 60 years, I said, my dad knew literally everything. When I was 65 years, I said, I wish I could talk it over with dad once more. But my dad passed away. Young people, he's an old-fashioned man. He doesn't know. But there's a time that comes into our life. He said, Daddy, I wish you were there, Daddy. He was a young man with only one son driving his scooter on the Richmond Town Road. On that rainy day, that branch fell and he was stuck under the branch with a neck fracture. Got a call in the night saying he passed away, went to Victoria. They pulled him out of the mortuary. And I saw his face and came back. The son was a little boy. He could not get over his father's death. And before he could go to school, he will take the uniform, stand in front of the father's picture and say, Daddy, couldn't you see properly and drive? Can I wear this for today? Ha! Huh. Daddy, I miss you, Daddy. Out of anger, I said this. Daddy, I shouted at you, Daddy. But you have been very patient. You are available. Father, sometimes we are so busy. Pardon me for more personal examples, but that talks to me so much. My little fellow, he used to play with rockets. You know, you play with paper boats, paper planes. Am I right? Huh? You know how to make it at least? Right. And the child makes it, and he was too small. And my family knows when daddy prepares not to come inside. But the door was open. He pushed the door, and he said, Dada, he wanted to show that paper plane. I didn't listen. I couldn't hear. He came a little more close. He said, Dada, I didn't hear. He came a little more close. Dada, he was also scared. And then he came a little more close with his little hands behind it. He said, Pastor. When he said, Pastor, I looked at him. You know what he's saying? In this house, I don't need a pastor. I need a daddy. I don't need a software engineer in this house. I need a father. I don't need a preacher. I need a father who can play badminton, who can crawl on his force, who can talk to me like a father, not as a preacher talking to a congregation. Daddy, listen, daddy. Friends, I must say, I sent it to my, all my children this morning. Don't do the mistakes that I did, children. But I'm watching you spending more time with your children. Praise God for all of you. I missed out on those days. Available. May I say this? Nothing is going to happen to FIBA if I don't go one day. Am I right? Nothing is going to happen. We think if we don't go, the entire FIBA will close. No, it will continue. They are waiting for you to leave. It will continue. If I don't go, nothing is going to happen, friends. 
FIBA will continue, but we lose the opportunity of embracing the child, carrying the child, kissing the child, looking into the eyes of the child and say, son, I love you, daughter, I love you. In 1 Kings chapter 1, verse 6, that is a very painful verse. His father had never rebuked him by asking, why do you behave as you do? His father had never rebuked him. Why, daddy? Why is it only I get punished, not the other one? Why? Eli with his sons, go home and read. He had three warnings. Number one, people were talking about his children. The prophet warned about his children. God himself intervened. But look at the father's response. In 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 23 and 24, Eli's response was very mild. He became one with his children. As a father, do I see what God wants me to see? He was patient. He was available. Look at the third thing you find here. He was a loving father. He was a loving father. The love of the father was seen. Not by the father saying, son, I love you, son. Daughter, I love you. These are words. But I'm sure the son would have seen the father coming running. Again, the Bible doesn't say how old he is. He would have seen the father come running, falling on his neck, hugging him and kissing him. An expression of genuine love. An expression. You saw Jacob and, what's your name? I forgot, Priyanka. <laughs> right. It's not just on the pulpit, my friends. May I say this? In many of our family seminars, I've said this. Parents, no matter how old the children are, they will always enjoy the embrace and a hug and a kiss. Don't do it in public. They'll be embarrassed. Do it when they come home. An expression of forgiveness, an expression of acceptance, he never asked for explanation first. He never told the son, son, sit down. First, I want to know what all you did. You know, sometimes we want the children to give the entire account of 21 years. He didn't say, now sit down. Please tell me how you wasted my money. And then give them a sermon. He didn't do anything. He sat. He hugged him. And the son on his own Ask for forgiveness. Look at that. Verse 18. I have sinned against heaven and before you. Look at verse 19. This is all he said to himself. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. When he expressed his father's, when he experienced his father's love, I'm sure whatever he wanted to say, looking at his father, I think he would have forgotten the complete sentence. He missed out one line there. Did you notice? Look at what he missed out. He forgot that he, he said, make me like one of your hired servants in verse 21. He didn't say it. He didn't say it. Maybe the father did not allow him to finish the sentence. The father said, no, come on, bring it. Oh, friends, I said it. I don't know where I said it. This man is definitely not an Indian. The father. How do I know? I know it for sure. If he was an Indian, he would have said, told his wife, you spoiled him, no? See, he's coming. <laughs> he's definitely not an Indian. He went, he rushed, he hugged. He never gave for any explanation. Listen, I'm talking as a father. Very often we want the child to give an entire account. Friends, let him give an account to the Lord. He said, I've sinned against the Father. I've sinned against God. And daddy, father, put the ring, the robe, and the shoes, the signs of sonship, which the father restored to him. Four things happened, my friends. He remembered. He returned. 
he repented and he was restored why should i be here when i have a patient father when i know an available father when i have a loving father i will go back to him he will not push me aside yes i have done mistakes the equation is different but i know and if you ask the son son what made you to come back to your father he will say this you know what what made me to come back to my father is i knew i know in my heart my daddy is such a loving man he is a very patient father he is available that is why the title for today my father my best pal patient available and loving father who reflected the father out of god i read this beautiful article it's called the priceless scribbles reverend richard fairchild tells about a story that appeared many years ago in the christian reader it was called priceless scribbles it concerns a father who touched his child's life in an unexpected way a young boy watched as his father entered his study the boy noticed that his younger brother john was trying to hide from his father and he knew that his brother would have done something and he knew what he did he took his father's father's favorite hymnal and took his the pencil and scribbled all over the first page those of you who love books jacob all of us you know if a child scratches that book we get so agitated and he knew the brother knew that his younger brother john has done something staring at his father waiting that for the father whether the father will punish john the little boy the father picked up his prized hymnal the books were very precious to him his study was beautifully arranged books were knowledge but what the father did next was remarkable he came he saw little john hiding with that pencil in his hand father took that pencil and he wrote these words john's work 1959 age 2 how many times i have looked into your beautiful face and into your warm alert eyes looking up at me and thank god for the one who has now scribbled in my new hymnal you have made the books sacred the older brother said wow this is punishment the author of the story is now an adult he goes on to say that hymnal became a treasured family possession it was a tangible proof that their parents loved them they taught the lesson that what really matters is people not object patience not judgment love not anger what will you do when the child scribbles all over your life what will you do what will you do when nothing left only the broken pieces of your dreams will you collect them and make a beautiful structure out of it and say the handiwork of my son my daughter the son would say my father is my best pal he would say these three qualities drove me back to my father i do not know if there were wet eyes the father who reflected the father heart of god pastor jacob cherian made all of us to stand we have a role to play there are many wanting to have a father father who reflected the father out of god maybe the childhood was tough maybe you had a difficult father in your life maybe you haven't seen 
your father. And you're saying, I'm not even able to pray that Lord's Prayer. Our Heavenly Father. My dear loved ones, the only one who knows me as I am, not even my wife and children, is my Heavenly Father. He will never write me off. He will always wait and say, Come, how far will you go? Come, wherever you go, I am there. And this morning, if you feel, and if you're sitting and saying, Pastor, I have never experienced that love. Taste this love. Taste this love. Amazing love. John chapter 6, verse 37. All that my Father gives me will come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise reject. Let me close with this poem. <clears throat> a dad is a person who's loving and kind, and often he knows what you have on your mind. He's someone who listens, suggests, and defends. A dad can be one of your very best friends. He's proud of your triumphs, but when things go wrong, a dad can be patient and helpful and strong. In all that you do, a dad's love plays a part. There's always a place for him deep in your heart. And each year that passes, you're even more glad, more grateful and proud just to call him your dad. Thank you, dad, for listening and caring, for giving and sharing, but especially for just being you. Happy Father's Day. Mothers, what are you doing in the service this morning? <laughs> May I ask you to do something? Would you teach the children to honor the father? Would you teach your children to stand with the father, to pray for the father? Do not put the father down. Do not push him down. Teach your children to respect the father, to obey the Father. Teach your children to pray for the Father. That's the role that you have. Encourage your children to look up.